to everybody who's been liking the videos so far. We thank y'all. You guys liking the videos has kind of helped us start to grow the channel even more. So we appreciate it. To those who have not, please, we ask you, hit the like button before you even watch this video. It helps us grow the channel, helps people learn about us, and, and allows us to make more great content like this. So that's all we got. Thank you for helping us grow this channel. Hit the like button right now and uh, on with the show. Super. Dute. Tough work. Tough work. Y'all know what it is. Mm -hmm. Podcasting and things for everyone, for the world to see and hear. Mr. Elogic, how are you today? I'm great, man. I'm great. Um, tired a little bit. <laughs> I was kicking it last night, apparently. Yeah, man. Celebrating. Yeah. You know? My man's had a show last night or a streaming show. You know, yeah. performance, I guess they would call it. Is this a yeah. show if no one's there? It's just a performance, right? If it's streaming, yeah, it's, just, it's a just a performance. Okay, so you that was the thing that that was the thing that I had to get wrap around my head even during practice and setting up. That's why I did all the incense and all that stuff. I'm yeah. like, this is a performance. This is not yeah. ain't nobody gonna be there. So this is like TV. <laughs> this is like performing on Jimmy Fallon or some shit. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a whole different thing. I I'm still I haven't done anything like that, but I'm sure the time will come at some point when I do it. But I just yeah. been watching and peeping the movements, mm -hmm. you know, taking my little notes, seeing how I'll freak it when the time right. comes, you know. <laughs> word, <laughs> word. But, uh, you know, uh, we're here. We're here. And uh, we appreciate y'all listenership, you know, as we continue to build this thing and push this thing. And, you know, everybody on YouTube, we appreciate y'all. You know, I, um, I've been back from the vacation me and Elogic have been dropping episodes every week, but me and this man have not been seeing each other every week, you know. So right. uh, we just been doing our thing. And yeah, uh, so if we if we talk a little long in this episode, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah, it's, don't mind us. Two friends catching up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. That's all it is. Uh, okay, so this week we're gonna talk about um, fame, fame and uh, notoriety. And this conversation was sparked from the text conversation me and Elogic had uh, several weeks ago where I was on my Facebook and you know, everybody got them Facebook friends who just be thirsty for attention all the time. You know, yeah. always just got some shit going on where it's like, this don't even feel like a natural update. This just feels like you just want, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> attention. Yeah, he's thirsty. He's thirsty, thirsty out here. Thirsty for yeah. them likes and comments, you know? Yeah. And I was like, man, they want attention so bad. And I remember texting you and I said something to the effect of, man, if they only knew what real fame was like, right? I wonder if they could handle it, mm -hmm. right? Because you and I have tasted that. Right. And in many instances, the way we move is to get out of the spotlight on our personal time. Right. Like right. we want our personal time for us. Mm -hmm. I don't post on my personal Facebook once every couple months. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? Now, you don't use yours that much. Like, it's not right. like we be posting status updates every day. I got people who post five, six a day. Oh, Ten, yeah. They use Easily. it like Twitter, and it's annoying yeah. to me. But um, what this conversation was, I wonder if do people know what fame is really like and what these same people, if, had, if they experienced it, would they be able to take it? Right. You know, the true price of fame. And so today we're going to talk about things that people have not thought about uh, that come along with fame and notoriety. And hopefully this is eye opening to some people because it's things that people who haven't been in certain positions don't even know. Right. And uh, don't even think about. Don't even think about. Don't even think about. And they look at like famous people a little bit differently. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this episode, you know, we're going to get into that. So we'll take a break and we'll be right back. We got you stuck off the realness, the most infamous, you heard of us, official podcast murderers, the show comes equipped with few points to share, grown man ideas for all those who care and want to grow, so go ahead and download, every single week with a brand new episode, you're not alone in this world cousin, so we share information and honest discussion, and keep repping the culture, like we supposed to, they spread gossip but they never come close to, I can hear it inside their tone, they talk about the industry but never left their home you get laced up 
with bullet points and such plus empowering topics that they never would touch you can put your whole network against the team but super duty tough works the mvp most valuable podcast on mp3 priceless info but all of it's free huh. so take these words home and think them through super duty tough work is coming at you you are now listening to super duty tough work with your host blueprint Adult conversations, no shucking, no jiving, and no bullshit. All right, folks, we're back. Super Duty Tough Work, Blueprint, A Logic, the most infamous podcast on planet Earth. This week we are talking about fame. The price of fame for everybody that wants it. Have you thought about what comes along with it? Probably not. Most likely not. No. (laughs) (laughs) So we're going to start with number one thing that you probably have not thought about in the reality of fame is this. People expect more from you. Yeah, you can't just make you can't just make comments. I expect more from you, Prince. Isn't that the, the most popular <laughs> refrain? Yes. I swear to God, yes. any debate I've had online mm-hmm. with any group of haters, even if I was a thousand percent right, yeah. inevitably, somebody's going to come and comment. They're going to say, print, though, I expect more from you. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, why? He's yeah. being an asshole. <laughs> why don't you expect more from him? And they'll be like, but he's not famous. He's, mm-hmm. he's not popular. He's not you know, blueprint. He's not blueprint. And I just feel yeah. like, damn. Yeah, it's real. It's real. You just got to accept it. Mm-hmm. If you choose the life or if you are blessed with uh, any type of success and typically success brings along with it notoriety, uh, you know, fame, public profile, you're going to have to accept the reality that fairness when it comes to expectations doesn't exist. Most of us live our lives with this idea and this premise of fairness. When you're in elementary school and you're around other kids, if you can't talk in class, the other kid can't talk in class. Right. If this kid gets suspended for something for fighting, you get sus- It's like the set of rules that everyone knows. It's universal. This yeah. applies to you, applies to them right Mm -hmm. expectations of all children are pretty much the same and you kind of get this idea in your head that that's what life is about Mm -hmm. and that's quote unquote fair but once you become a public figure you start to quickly see that this isn't the same Uh, it's you know because people will look at you like hey i expect a higher sense of everything from you Mm -hmm. behavior performance uh responsibility whatever you call it you can no longer compare yourself with other regular people because right or wrong regular people don't compare you to regular people anymore yeah it goes back to you know the charles barkley i'm not a role model thing Mm -hmm. even though you don't have a choice once you get to that point (coughs) you don't have a choice but to be a role model because you're famous people are looking at you and expecting things from you that fair or not, yeah. you know, because you're in the spotlight, you are supposed to carry yourself a certain way now. You know, yeah. this is why this is why people hate on LeBron so much, because he's that guy. So people, everybody wants a piece. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants you to do things their way because you're in the spotlight and we expect you more. to do. Yeah, we expect you to do more. We expect you to be more. We expect you to conduct yourself you know, in a certain way. And if yeah. you don't, then we got a problem with it. And we have the right to talk because you entertain us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. And, yeah. and, and, and and it extends into so many things too. like, think about just like the burden of expectation as it relates to people who are public figures and charity mm-hmm. versus people who are regular people in charity. Right. With notoriety comes the expectation that you contribute uh, publicly 
yeah. to certain things that a regular person does not carry around with them. Mm -hmm. the, the, the public figures always going to be, well, what are you doing for the community? All right. What are you doing for this group? What are you doing for that person? Right. Um, I don't think the regular per I mean, and you see this for people who don't even do the shit themselves. Right. They hold that person uh, who has the notoriety to such a high, uh, higher expectation than they even hold for themselves. And I think that uh, it causes a lot of tension with people who are public figures. You know, yeah. they say, well, that shit, that shit weighs heavy, man. Yeah. It weighs heavy. Yeah, because it's not a good. It's not good enough just to be successful and be a good person. No, oh no, come on now. Now for y'all, that's good enough. For mm. this guy, nope. <laughs> yep. That's why people used to shit on Michael Jordan because yeah. they didn't think that he was, you know, a charitable dude. They didn't think that he yeah. was, um, you know, in the politics and all that shit. But he did a lot of stuff behind the scenes. He didn't do it publicly. Yeah. You know, and it came out years and years later that he did, you know, contribute to a lot of community things and you know yeah. that kind of stuff. He just didn't care as much about the you know yeah. public knowing about that part of his yeah. life and and, yeah. and and we've seen public opinion change between his era and the lebron era right his era was no one was truly really, all athletes weren't expected to be public about stuff like that yeah. now the era is like you not only have to do it you have to be public because of social media. Because of social you know, media and the whole yeah. social justice thing that's now yeah. associated with sports. Whereas mm -hmm. in sports, it was at one point pretty revolutionary to be involved in stuff outside of the game like that. Yeah. Now it's ex almost expected of these people. Right. And people will punish them for not doing so. So, yeah, that's number one. Yeah, people I don't think regular people can handle that. <laughs> nah, nah. Like, what okay. if you tell, hey, tomorrow, starting tomorrow... You can't just do what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. You're going to now be expected to do way more than than them. Well, that's yeah. not fair. It's not about fair. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> so them's the fair, rules. So. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> anyway, carry on. <laughs> right. Right. And this, you know, and so uh, you see people fall short. A lot of it has to do with this and not truly, truly accepting this reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. So number two you know, thing, the price of fame, is that when you fall, you fall further. Mm -hmm. So when people look at public people and they think about public failure, what I think they fail to, to consider is that the person who has ascended to a higher height, when they fall publicly, they fall a long way. It's a long way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. If you imagine this as stair steps. Yeah. If if a normal dude falls, he falling down one step. Yep, get right back up. <laughs> Take that step again tomorrow. Yeah, you yeah. back up. When yeah. you're a public figure, you just dun 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 dun. dun, dun. You falling <laughs> sideways, tumbling. Oh shit! Get up, keep stumbling. You done fell down fifty steps, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 just as it's, it's fifty steps to fall to reach your bottom, it's that much harder to get back up. Yeah. And people don't know this reality and they don't accept it. And that's why you have to look at how public people conduct themselves when bad things happen. Right. Famous people conduct themselves differently because they have a lot more to lose. Yes. Very much so. <laughs> you know, yeah. and uh, until you have as much to lose as some of these people, you may never truly understand why they do some of the things that they do. Yeah. Yeah, like the fall, the getting back up takes so much more time for someone with notoriety. Yeah. You know, because you have to work on, you know, this whole cancel culture and all that. Like, bro, your image can be gone in a day. Yep. Something that took you 20, 30 years to build yep. can be gone tomorrow if you say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, do the wrong thing in the public eye. And it'll take you 20 30 years to build that shit back up yeah you know like it's 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 a crazy thing but it's it's so so true and it's it's very difficult you know for famous people to navigate that's why they got all these pr people and you know like you know working on their image and making sure that you know they are 
looking good in the eyes of the public because that fall is crazy and that getting back up, you know, is hard. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, uh, I, I thought about it. And one thing that, that jumps out to me is how, like, if you have a disagreement with someone, if you have, have a falling out with something or you fall short or you fuck up. Typically you just only have one person to work that out with. Yeah. When someone is famous, they have masses. The world. The world, <laughs> the world to work that out with. And it's if Beyonce have a problem. Yeah. Everybody, she got to apologize to everybody. <laughs> if she do something wrong Aaron. to Jay, she got to apologize. Jay had to apologize to everyone. Yeah. It for, wasn't just his wife anymore, right? Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a saying that says, like, what's, what, uh, you know, a problem that happens in private can be resolved in private. But a, a matter that starts private and is made public can never be made private again. Right. And that speaks to this quite a bit because once these, because you're a public figure, your shit is public now. And the resolution now can't be private. Right. Because it's public. And normal people are afforded that. You and I have beef. We can straight up get on the phone, chop it up, the end, and no one got to hear shit about it. Right. I, right. I mean, my bad, man. Yeah. I was I was out of pocket. Mm-hmm. We good. We good, bro. Let's keep it pushing. Cool. Yeah. The average person is like, hey, I just got to make this statement on every social media platform and apologize to the public because I've fallen short of your expectations mm-hmm. and how I handled this situation. Even though that situation might not have nothing to do with the public. Right. right. Private now. You know what I'm saying? And pri- what, what was private was made public. So it's deep, man. But yeah, when you fall, you fall further and you got more shit to clean up. Yeah. Okay. Number three thing. Price of fame. Everybody assumes you're stuck up. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> This like back in back in the, you know, the weightless height, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you if we were walking down the street and we didn't feel like talking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just on some regular. I'm not in the mood kind of shit. Yeah. You know, not being an asshole. Just I'm not I'm I'm having a bad day, bro. Like yeah. I ain't, <laughs> You're I ain't not got allowed time to have to, bad day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to talk to you right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be I'm still going to be nice, but I ain't I ain't. I'm having a bad day. I ain't trying to. <laughs> oh man, fuck you, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Fuck that dude. You know they go back, man. Logic, man. He an asshole, mm-hmm. man. I was just trying to say what's up. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. And he act like he didn't even see me. You know what I mean? Like I was having a bad day, bro. I could have a bad day. Can I have a bad day? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's different, man. It's like uh, I think about it. You know what? What really makes me see this is like how often people say, "I met such and such." entertainer and you wouldn't believe how humble they were right they were so nice right now that wouldn't mean shit but it it proves that the expectation (laughs) is that they're gonna be an asshole yeah not not gonna be nice when do you rave about someone simply being nice right and being humble i can't believe this motherfucker was so normal so down to earth why because motherfuckers have a perception that you're going to be an asshole, that you're going to be standoffish, that you're going to be stuck up and, and in your head and just really impersonable. Mm-hmm. This one, I don't know whose fault this is. Maybe it's artists. Maybe people don't understand the reality of being uh, a public figure. And mm-hmm. like you said, they think that they should always be on, always be accessible and that they're but these people aren't like them. Right. The normal people, but they have a a. And a, a, a not so normal life, you know. Right. Um, but people assume you're stuck up, and that that doesn't matter. Uh, you know how well your intentions are. The default assumption about people who are famous is that they are not going to be nice. Right. And if you don't acknowledge that when you have some notoriety, the way you handle people is going to be kind of fucked up. Yeah. You know because you're going to think that. I'm just like you. I'm allowed to have a bad day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you're not. Not to them. Not nope. to them. 
<laughs> not to them. Every day you got to be ready to interact with your fans yeah. and you know, no, nothing can go wrong in your life that you got to deal with. You always got to be ready. Come on. You know, to be nice and smile and smile for the camera and sign this, you know, yeah. sign that. Yeah. Yeah, man, that and shit, that shit is not cool. Right. And there's benefits that come along with this. So I don't want to sit here and make this episode sound like it's some woe is me shit. It's not. It's oh, just yeah. I want people to understand that, yo, there's a price for this. And when you're chasing mm-hmm. attention, be aware that there's levels and shit that's, that starts to come with that. As you start to get attention, for those of you who who uh, want to be public and want to be successful at anything you do, um, understand there's a price for that. And uh, there's some trade-offs. And so yeah. that's number three. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. Word. While I got y'all here, let me remind y'all about a few things we got back in stock on waitlist.net right now. First being the King No Crown movie DVD. This is a double uh, DVD, deluxe DVD, one DVD, first DVD is the movie, second is all the uh, the extra features, uh, that's back in stock, it was out of stock for a while, my movie, this is my first movie, uh, came out in 2017, uh, free version, which is the clean versions on YouTube, this is the, uh, the, the unedited version, dirty version, I guess if you will, which is available now, wait, let's start now, other thing, uh, 10 Traits of Successful Hip-Hop Artists. This book came out about two to three months ago. So my latest book, this book breaks down um, the habits, you know, the traits that you see across some of the dopest artists in hip-hop. This is my fourth book. And uh, so far, it's been my most successful, amazing feedback on it. This book is 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 here. Uh, if you missed out the first time, you know, it's like 14 bucks on the store plus shipping. We got uh, deals that come with bookmarks. Uh, with it, free stickers, autographs, all of that stuff on waitlist.net. That's that's in stock. Uh, other thing, uh, more importantly, we've restocked, we've reissued the um, Two-Headed Monster vinyl. This vinyl is, uh, it was red on the first pressing. This next pressing is yellow. Um, this is just now hitting. Um, so if you haven't got it, head to waitlist.net and get it. Sold out the first time in like two, three months. Uh, it's doing pretty good this time, you know, but get it if you missed it the first time. It's on yellow vinyl. Comes with a download card. Also being restocked, has been re-impressed, is the Two-Headed Monster vinyl right here. Clear vinyl, Two-Headed Monster album. Same thing. It sold out pretty fast in 2018, so we just repressed it uh, here. Uh, but you can get that at waitlist.net. And there's prices, uh, special bundle prices for all of this stuff. Now, what's already been in stock, which you probably already have if you don't, just so you don't know, King No Crown. King No Crown uh, vinyl. It's red vinyl. King No Crown is double vinyl, though. Uh, two pieces of double vinyl. Uh, but yeah, that's here. Um, you know, that's the record with Persevere on it. Um, you know, dope, dope record. Great Ideas Never Dies on this record as well. But that's here. And then the last thing, which some of you may have or may not, is this Vigilante Genesis EP, which is me and Aesop Rock on a production. This is available on vinyl too. But this one is uh, blue vinyl. I ain't gonna open this up just to show you blue vinyl. Trust me, it's blue. But this is, comes with all the uh, the vocal tracks on one side and the instrumentals which are produced by Aesop Rock on the B side. So that's it. If you got this stuff already, thank you. If you don't, you know, if you wanna support, go to waitlist.net, pick up your copy of any of these things on vinyl, any of the books, the movie, we have apparel as well. And thank you for your time. See y'all soon, peace. All right, so I guess we can come back from this break for this shit. Do this again. <laughs> Super duty, tough work. Yeah, back again. Talking about the price of fame this week. Mm-hmm. If you're at home, I hope you find this conversation enlightening. Um, and so we're gonna jump back into the list, bullet points and such. Number four, reality what comes along with being famous is you can't be critical of anything. I learned this last one. <laughs> I learned this one hard. I, I watch you learn this on your Facebook every few months. You start talking yeah. music with your with your followers, and they'll just be like, "I can't believe you don't like him, Logic. <laughs> You're an <laughs> asshole." Yeah, man, I lost followers because I didn't like um, what was it, um, Deltron? Yeah, like cats was like shitting <laughs> on me because I did not like Deltron Thirty Thirty, an album. Yeah. 
You didn't say it was crap. You just said I don't like it. It don't. It don't. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not me. It's it's not my thing. That's it. How what the fuck? How dare you? <laughs> He's better than you. You know. <laughs> you're just mad. You're just jealous. That's yeah. what they hit you with. That you're just jealous. But that thing is a reality, man. I found out the exact same way that being critical of certain things like our our because as fans we're no different than anybody else right we rap but we have artists that we check for we have albums we anticipate we believe the hype when it comes to certain albums and then we're like oh i want to hear that and we're fans of rap we wouldn't be in our position if we were not incredible fans of this shit right meaning our listening shit goes deep and deep and we study it but the reality is that when we say we don't like something people treat us differently than anybody else who don't like something (laughs) right right (laughs) this ain't fair but this ain't about fair right this we already established we established that fair it's not about fair fuck fair this is reality that when you're a public uh person you have to really watch how you criticize other things in public, particularly people who are your peers, you know, like it's okay for them to be, have a a music reviews thing, but we got to be very careful. And a lot of that has went into like, we've done album reviews on this podcast, right? Right. Right. But we typically don't we try to make at least three of the four things we interview things we really like right right right, right. we try not to review albums that we think suck and if we review something that we may be disappointed in it's actually because we're big fans of that person Mm -hmm. maybe their previous work and this particular thing didn't grab us right but even then we gotta be real fucking careful yeah, we got, we got. It's a thin line between being a hater, yeah, and, you know what I'm saying, and and you know just being, you know, giving your opinion. Yeah, it's a thin line. I miss the days of just being able to be a fan like that. Yeah, man, we can't do that no more. Can like just, we can do that only. We can only do that amongst ourselves. Now. Yeah, you like know, you like and I can. Yeah, we can't do that shit in public. No, you know we can't. Like if it's a new album, you know, for example. You know, just because we're friends, like if there's a new atmosphere album that came out, right? We said we didn't like it publicly. You don't want. Oh that. God, that's oh, a fire. You don't want those. Tr- yeah, you don't want those problems. <laughs> you do not want those problems. Like, yeah, you can't talk about certain things. You know, yeah. and so it's like, and it also comes along with that. Can you can you overly praise your peers? Right. Nope. You can't do that. Can either. we say that they dropped a classic? People right. will be like, mm, man, that's your homie. You just. Yep. Making some shit. It was aight. It was aight. Right. Right. Look at them gassing this shit up. <laughs> Payola. They paid y'all right. to say that shit. You know that's your man. So it's like, you got to just watch it. And I don't think people yeah. understand that. I mean, shit, even in terms of, you know, I was writing this 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 uh, passage in my book a couple days ago, and it was about this exact same thing about how you can lose followers over things that don't mean anything right to you in the grand scheme of thing. So like you can say, whether it be another artist you don't like, whether it be a movie you don't like, hell, you know, people will fight over sports, uh, politics, uh, religion. Like you can say something, but taking a stance on anything of that nature as a public figure, it's going to set you up to be, you know what I'm saying, attacked. And you're going to be arguing over some shit that really ain't that deep to you. Right. It's not. It's just an opinion. Like, that's yeah. the that's the scary thing is that once you get to a certain level and we and, and like you said before, like we've just experienced this a little bit. Yes. You know what I'm saying? On a very small scale, you know, like even, you know, stuff Slug has to deal with is a little more than what we have to deal with. Right. You know what I'm saying? But we've experienced this on a very small scale and we can't share our our opinions about things if it goes against the grain right you know what i'm saying like or else we get crucified yes you know? start like, getting them emails I mean, start getting yep. unfriended i can't believe you don't like this 
I can't believe mm-hmm. you ain't endorsing that. Oh yeah. man, you just jealous. You just salty because they this. And it's like, damn. Mm-hmm. It's just my opinion, bro. That's like, it. It means nothing. Yeah, it's just my opinion. This is what I think. Yeah, you know, like, I'm sorry that I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't share the same sentiment that you yeah. have for this purpose, you know, certain thing or this certain, you know, act or whatever. Like, yeah. I'm sorry I don't, but I'm still the same dude. Like, yeah. I'm still me. Thank you. You know, yeah, this I'm still nothing. me. It's not, and you know, here's the irony. A lot of people set this whole thing in motion or continue to cycle because they constantly put pressure on people to comment on certain things like yeah do you remember when um odd future first came out every fucking day mm-hmm. for months damn near a year i would get someone say yeah but what do you think about odd future but what do you think about fucking odd future but odd future though what about them how do y'all feel about them odd future hey they see uh, we what do you think though every time an artist gets to the spot like you see interviews after interviews where people want them to constantly uh especially if they're an older artist they want them to constantly comment on younger artists Mm -hmm. almost to prove that they're still cool and listen and got the ear to the street so then you got artists who are like fucking 40 years old right who, who are expected to comment on artists who are 20 years old and only been out a year yeah, like I and, and if you say like I don't listen to that shit, then it's like oh, uh, oh so and yeah. such, you know, shits on the new school. Yeah, you know, like yeah, like those are the headlines that clickbait shit. Just because you say like I don't, you know, it's it always brings me back to the uh, common line um, where he says, "If I don't like it, I don't like it. That don't mean that I'm hating." You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it's just that's my opinion, bro. Like that's it. That's it. That, that's but, my opinion. I'm sorry it don't match your opinion, but yeah. that don't mean I'm a dick. Just because <laughs> <laughs> we don't got the same opinion, I'm just a yeah. human being, man. Yeah, yeah, man. It, 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 it's a it's a messed up cycle, but you know yeah. we know it ain't about fair. It's just reality. All this shit on this list is just fucking reality. Um, mm-hmm. We're not here to complain about fair. We've accepted all this shit on this list. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yep, this is what it is. I can't do that. I can't do that. That's out. <laughs> Let me avoid yeah. that. You know, but that's just. That's it. That's number four. Yeah. Number five, and this is some shit that used to happen to me all the time. Number five thing, the price of fame, is that people assume <laughs> you're smashing any woman they see you with. <laughs> this is for years. I had yeah. home girls who was like my legit friends. And then I mm. would hear through other people, they were like, Yeah, such as I said that she was messing with old girl. I'd be like, That's like my best friend, that's my homie. Like, yeah. why do y'all but then I then it hit me like, oh, they assume this because I'm blueprint. Right. Like and we were just getting a drink. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're just hanging out, getting something to eat, something. Yeah. yeah. I'm not allowed to have female friends like that. Right. You know what I mean? Like if, if you see him, him with him, he got to be messing with him. Mm-hmm. And that's a weird thing because just think about how that impacts uh, the people who, who hear it themselves. If they, right. if a woman hears that every woman you with, you messing with, she might be like, I don't know if I want to be, Friends with him yeah. or associate right. with because I don't want people assuming that about me and I don't need that kind of smoke. I don't need that kind of static in my life. Yeah. And as a public figure, we don't do this shit to other people we see out. We see two people at a bar talking, it's just two people at a bar talking. Yep, yeah, exactly. You see two people at dinner, they just two people at dinner, man. Mm-hmm. But if you if you a public figure, oh man, what's up with them? Yeah. Man, I knew it. it. Yeah, because TMZ is a prime example. Anytime <laughs> somebody just out together, yeah. it's like, oh, what's going on with these two? It's yeah. like, yo, this is my homie. Like, before we was famous, we was hanging out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now we famous, and now y'all think just because, you know, people are friends. It's possible to be friends with people of the opposite sex. Yeah. smashing. It's possible. It's possible. Hey, it happens. Yeah. We are professionals here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think we are allowed to have friendships like everyone else, you know, uh, but you got to be careful because sometimes the expectation of you people add more to it when you're a public figure, no matter right. who you are, what what your what field you're in. If you're a public figure, if they see you with the opposite sex. There's going to be some inferences there. You know what I mean? Like and, and you knowing that people be going out of their way. Like, I don't know if you saw the shit like this was maybe eight, seven, six, seven years ago. I guess five years ago, they're talking about uh, uh, Mike Pence just refused to have dinner with women because 
he was just like he was basically like i'm not gonna have dinner i'm not gonna ever be alone with another woman not even for dinner yeah because i don't want no problems no problems at all you can't yeah you can't and i was like some people were offended like oh i can't believe he's not doing that because what if a woman is you know they're networking blah 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 he was just like nah no and i don't think some people understood that it wasn't even political right it was like yo as a public figure he had accepted that people are gonna be assume some shit they see him out with the opposite mm-hmm. sex yeah for some I shit wonder that, if his wife knows yeah does your wife like, know you that know? bitch <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I mean? They taking pictures, putting it on Instagram. Caught, caught your ass now. Ding, ding, ding. Send it to TMZ. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. he, his wife know the whole thing. It's part of right. his job. You know what I mean? But uh, as a public figure, you gotta know that that's part of it, man. It's yeah. part of it. And a lot of people just they just avoid it altogether because they don't want that shit in their life. You know? Yeah, true. So that's number five. Number six price of fame this is a real one for us is that if you're around you have to be on yeah this was bad back in the you know when shows were heavy yeah you know what i'm saying when we were doing a lot of shows in columbus cats just see us around it's like yo spit something you know what i'm saying yo you know everybody <laughs> wanted to start a cipher yeah. yeah everybody wanted to cipher at the coffee shop yeah you know? it's like you be in the grocery to store get a yeah, I'm just here to get a cup of coffee. Right. You know, I'm just, just getting some, you know. I'm just I'm like getting you. some potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be running up on me with all this rap shit. Can I, can I have yeah, a personal yeah. life? You know. Yeah. But but there's a belief amongst the people. Subconsciously, they don't even know no better. Mm-hmm. Because when they see you, it's on a music video. It's a performance. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. you know, a live setting. It's, it's you doing your job as an entertainer or as mm-hmm. a public figure. And their belief they don't think that that's your job right. to the extent to where if they have a job, they are allowed to leave their job at the job when they're not at the job. Right. Right. If they do customer service, they don't got to be home doing customer service to their neighbors. Like, how can I help you? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 You're, you know what? You're right, sir. Can I get you more? Like, it's like, nah, that's my job. I'm home now. It's like, what up, my guy? I'm not here to accommodate you uh, because that's not our relationship. And yeah. everyone else is allowed to not be on when you're a public figure. People have an expectation that you be on. They have you see politicians or or entertainers. They be out and paparazzi run up on them. They can't have dinner places. They can't you know, they can't whether in airports or travel. It's like, yo, man, they can't go to certain clubs or certain places in certain cities because they know they won't be allowed to be a normal person. Right. And norm and being a normal person means you can go have a good time and and, and not be expected to play that role uh mm-hmm. that is your job. Yeah. A lot of public people don't have that. If you want to be famous, you gotta be ready for that because um people expect you to be on. Yeah. And a lot time. of artists fuck this up on tour, like we talked about. They'll I accepted early on. I was like, look, I'm not gonna now that I know this. Either I'm going to be on in there or off and not around. Right. And right. so that's the, how you have to be. That's how I conduct my whole career. So I know people will say, well, print, you know, you go through these periods where you drop music and then you go to periods where you might just disappear for a year or two. Mm-hmm. Post once every few weeks on social media. No updates on no music, nothing like that. That's me being off. Right. I'm off. I'm not in public. I'm doing normal shit. You know, might be visiting friends or family or just whatever makes me happy. I'm going to be trying mm-hmm. to do that, but it's not going to be in public. And I have right. to be that way because for me, it's the only way to get balanced because I know once I become public again, mm-hmm. once I start releasing music and doing shows and being out and on the scene, I'm expected to be cool. I'm expected mm-hmm. to be okay with interacting, engaging people as blueprint. Right. And so I don't expect people to change their expectations anymore. Right. I've changed my behavior to where if I'm at the merch table, I'm not going to be in a bad mood. Right. You can be. No. 
Yeah, that's you need to go sit in the van if you're in a bad mood. You can't. No. Nah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And I think that solves the problem for a lot of fans because what artists do, though, they'll be in a shitty mood and they'll go be doing a bunch of shit that they don't want to do. Mm-hmm. They're doing in stores they don't want to do. You know, they're doing uh, meet and greets they don't want to do. Barely signing this fucking signature, rushing people out of line, not wanting to take pictures, not wanting to sell merch, talk and, or shake hands and shit, not wanting to thank people for coming out. Their bad mood is now being pushed on these people who support them. Right. They, because he wasn't in the mood to be on. So my mm-hmm. thing is like, if you don't want to be on, just don't be there. Right. Because people's yeah. expectation is not going to change. True. Very true. Oh, yeah, so that's number six. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Well, I got y'all here. I want to give you a quick reminder that my first three books have been repressed and are available again on waitlist.net. Book number one, Word is Blog, Volume One. This book is a collection of some of my best blogs and writings online assembled into book form. Second book is Adventures in Counterculture, The Making of Adventures in Counterculture. This book is about my 2011 album titled Adventures in Counterculture. This book talks about the four year period that it took me to make that album, uh, the personal and artistic changes that it took. Uh, If you're into some artistic reading, this is for you. And then the third book, which is available again, is What a Night, a book about the worst shows of my career. This book is, as it says, it's a book about the worst shows of my career, but it's actually a pretty funny book. Some stories in here are just tragic or, or bugged out, but overall, this book will have you cracking up. So if you need some light reading, something that will just make you laugh, and if you've ever wondered what happens on the road with artists, pick up this book. All three are available, 10 bucks each. However, you can get all three of them for just 25 right now if you want them signed please put some instructions in the special instructions box and ask me to sign them and i'll get them signed before i get them out to you and i think they might have a check box for all three that allows you to get them signed so that's it for now back to the show all right folks we're back super duty tough work once again bringing you the realness Mm -hmm. the, the, the realness we got three more joints to go. Three more joints to go. The Price of Fame. Number seven thing. Let's get into this. And this is from the our side of things. Is yeah. that you question people's intentions. Yes. The thing about becoming known, famous, public figure, what have you, is that you go from a point to where no one knew you or gave a shit about you. But you remember well and you'll never forget to a point where you now have everyone's attention right and you're respected and and loved and people fuck with you now along the way you still are making personal connections with people you're meeting people whether you're dating whatever um doing business with people you start to question, especially those who have been burnt you know you get burnt Mm -hmm. once or twice on a business deal on a personal relationship because you got to know that just as there are people who are there to be genuine, there are people there who are just like there to get what they can get. Right. Hangers on are attracted to everybody successful. Um, And so you start to get a little jaded and you start to question everybody's intention. Yeah. It's unfortunate because it's like for the most part, the people who fuck it up, are probably like the people who do crime in any neighborhood. It'd be like 5% of people fucking right. shit up for the 95%. Yeah. You know what I mean? You get rid of that 5%, change the whole shit. But that 5%'s impact is so crazy that they fuck it up for the 95%. So you become skeptical like, yo, I hope this person ain't trying to take advantage of me. I hope they yeah. actually fuck with me for me. I hope that they're not trying to, you know, use me for clout. I hope that, man, and and it's fucked up, but it's real. Yeah, I've even, um, you know, unfortunately, looking back because of this particular point, I've missed out on opportunities because of being skeptical, Mm. you know, of people. Just because I don't know you when you're offering me something and I don't know if you're genuine or not because I don't know who you are, so I'm not going to do this. Luckily, you know, like one situation... um, you know, 
remember I got um, a couple of songs on that uh, that TV show. Um, yeah. Um, not too long ago. That dude had been trying to hit me up for years. <laughs> Just because, yeah. like, you know, like back, back way back in the day, we was always getting some kind of email, some, yeah. you know, like too good to be true shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And he had been trying to hit me up to get me to do music for like plays and shit like that, like kind of, you know, back in the day. And luckily he kept coming. Yeah. Until I was just like, okay, dude is, you know, like he took a break for a couple of years that he came back like, yo, I, I tried to hit you up back here, you know, and yeah. then I'm like, okay, you know, so let me contact him back. And it actually turned out to be, you know, some good shit. But if he wouldn't have been, you know, persistent, I would have missed out on that opportunity just because of me being skeptical of people's intentions yeah. when approaching me about shit. You know what I mean? So, you know try to you know take everything with a grain of salt but it gets difficult out here because when you get burnt yes you know you got to start looking at people like that especially when you got shit to lose oh yeah yeah it's so true and and you know there are so many people out here who who have used artists burned artists because some people you know there is a contingency of people who um i don't know if they know or not but they forget that like yo you're a real person and you, the shit that you see in your inbox every day that's bullshit, you still have to reconcile that with the legit things and try to figure out who's who. Right. How do I figure out this? And then you, But you don't want to be like, hey, man, I've been jerked a hundred times. You got to show and prove who you are. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of rude, too. Yeah, They didn't do nothing. But in the position you're in, you don't want to be taken advantage of. Yeah, that shit's deep, man. Yeah, you can miss on a lot of opportunities just because of that. Yeah. You know, I have no idea. Okay, that's number seven. Number eight. Price of fame is that uh, distractions. Yeah. The business, where there's the business start to push uh, the art to the back. Kicking it, having fun. Start mm -hmm. to put push the arts to the back. Uh, responsibilities you know start to push the art to the back you know I tweeted yesterday I said that you know the easiest part of being a music uh, uh, of a music career is making music mm -hmm. it's the other stuff that bogs you down yep. I wish I could make music all day <sighs> it's not the reality because a, a music career is like nah you don't get to just make music all day I got to do everything else that people don't see. And the more uh, successful you become, the more distractions you have from what it was that made you successful in the first place. Yeah. And those distractions aren't necessarily bad. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They're just, they just have to get done. Yes. You know, for, for artists like us who basically do everything ourselves, you have to put those packages together. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You got to, you know, go to the post office. You got to, you know, put that shit together and, you know, get that merch. And you got to do all of this other stuff other than make music. And it's like, damn. Yeah. Like, especially after you got an album coming yes. out, you know, it's months before you even get to even think about making any more music because, yep. you know, you're promoting your campaign and you're all that shit. So, you know, it's, it's hard to not be distracted, but yeah. the distractions aren't necessarily, you know, like your phone, you know what yeah, I'm saying? But yeah. the distraction from the art is the other shit that has to be done in order for you to be able to make the art again. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I've dealt with, with both sides. I've dealt with, you know, there was a point in time where I would go out so much and I was so successful. I knew everybody. I never paid to get it. Nothing. Right. People with me print. We got this going on tonight. Come through got your name at the door. Mm -hmm. every night mm -hmm. don't worry oh man print it man don't worry it's on me bartenders was just wiping my tabs out and everything mm -hmm. oh man just let me tip okay you can tip but that's it bro you're not paying in here you do that shit long enough it starts to become like that starts to become your thing and your art starts to become your side hustle yeah you know what i mean or it's like the party and should just be the side thing and the art should be your thing, but it starts to flip because you have so, you've you've become successful to the point to where you now are given more things and more distractions. 
right more access like how you think these these artists who like never had drug problems before they got signed <laughs> right right <laughs> never did never coke had issues never. never never all of a sudden when they go platinum mm-hmm. coke yeah they smoke weed 24 7 yeah alcoholics gotta go to rehab how yeah you get more access the higher up you go and with more access comes more distractions from the thing that got you there yeah facts that's number eight okay i think we got one more thing one more number nine i think number nine is that people don't see you as a person they see you as a character right and that's not even necessarily their fault because like think about what people do who are famous or athletes entertainers whatever public figures they're ordinary people doing extraordinary things right right they're they may be clark kent but we only see them as superman right right so what people don't know is that just because that person is successful doesn't mean they're any less than a human Mm -hmm. right and so you but you see people saying mean things to people online that they would never say to a normal person. Right. They would never say that to even a stranger that they didn't know. Right. In a public forum. And the reason they feel comfortable saying that is because to some degree, your success has dehumanized you. That's pretty deep. You might have to. I don't know if they hurt. (laughs) (laughs) People in the back. People in the back. Are you listening? (laughs) (laughs) That's so real, though. It's real. Success yeah. dehumanizes people. It turns them into superheroes. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody feel sorry for Superman. Nah. Who feels sorry for fucking Batman? There ain't a single super hu- superhero we feel sorry for. Right. Hey, man, you was born with this fucking talent. Sorry. Yeah. Go fight this fucking. You know what I mean? Go save the fucking save God. <laughs> yeah. Go save the world. Don't bro. complain about it. Mm -hmm. people see you as a character man and that's the reality that you have to be ready for because there's going to be people who say and do things to you that may seem really cruel Mm -hmm. but what you have to understand is that in the back of their mind the way that people get there is that they have to first not see you like they see themselves right so in your attempt to become extraordinary to become special to become, you know, famous, large, mm-hmm. this crazy person. Like you're you're incredible. But in doing so, you've lost what people perceive to be as your humanity. Yeah, that's 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 wild to think about. I mean, because even, you know, what you're talking about, like the way that people attack celebrities. Yeah. When they, you know, if they do do something that is out of the purview of what is expected of them. Yeah. Like the way that people attack and the shit that they say, you know, even if it's a celebrity that I don't even fuck with, sometimes I just be seeing like the headlines like, damn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that. <laughs> feel bad <laughs> you know for what me? Like, yeah. yeah. Like, damn, bro. That's like cold. you can't, you can't even walk down the street. You know what I'm saying? Without getting shit on sometimes <laughs> it's real it's and real. that's and that's part of the price and you know i really i really don't think that people fully understand Mm-mm. what fame is no you know what i'm saying no no i don't think they fully everybody want to be famous until they famous thank you you know what i'm saying like everybody want all the attention until you got all the attention and then it's yep. like why are y'all still looking at me <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, people don't know. It's like, yo, can I have some less of this attention? I don't want nobody looking at me. Right. Can I just right. do what y'all do? Can I turn yeah. this off? Nope. Nah, once it's on, it's on. I mean, and the thing is, like, like when you get Uber famous, it's the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the rest of your like Denzel can never have a regular life again. No. No. You know what I'm saying? Beyonce, Jay-Z, all these famous people, actors, actresses, musicians, they will never be able to have a regular life again 
even if they 90 years old. Yeah. Because people still going to want to snap that photo. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People might still want that autograph. Like, you still can't go out to eat with your grandkids. Yeah. Somebody still going to talk shit about their relationship. Yeah, all of that. Like, you, all of that. you, she be done resolved her relationship, and motherfuckers be running up on her talking shit about her decision to resolve her relationship. Yeah. You ain't shit. You let us down. How dare you do fucking do this with that man? I about, I about like, damn. Mm-hmm. I thought, yeah. I'm the one dating this motherfucker. Not you. Right. Why are you mad? Why are you this mad? Yeah. It's because they don't see you as a person. You know, and they had to make that leap to say something. You you don't say things like that to people that you see as, you know what I'm saying, like yourself. Yeah, exactly. You don't. And so they have to make a leap to be able to do that shit. And it's, and it's unfortunate, but it's part of the, of the game. Yeah. So that's it this week. That's it this week, man. You know, the price of fame. Let me read these back. Word. Number one, people expect more from you. Number two. When you fall, you fall further. Number three, people assume you're stuck up. Number four, can't be critical of anything. Number five, people assume you're smashing any woman they see you with. (laughs) Number six, if you're around, you have to be on. Number seven, you question people's intentions. And number eight, distractions. Number nine, people see you not as human but as a character word and uh i hope that uh y'all got something out of this and uh if you are you know fortunate enough to blow up at something you do hopefully mm-hmm. you refer back to this and it makes you come to terms with the new realities that you live in because yeah. uh, otherwise you will be bitter and not mm-hmm. be successful so just accept these realities because everyone has to deal with some shit on this list like this once you uh, get some notoriety or fame. And that's it this week. Work. And so we will see y'all next week. Work. Peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to Super Duty Tough Work. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Follow the podcast on SoundCloud. Shoot, I got styles already that's more complex that nobody know about. I mean, super duty tough work. <laughs>